Hello my soccer universe and welcome to a review of a rather weird weird Champions League uh, week in many ways. All away wins! All away wins! That's something I did not necessarily see coming. I saw maybe, you know, one or two I could imagine, uh, but uh, uh, of the away teams that uh, advance, but that all away teams will be winning. This is something that I did not foresee. And it also confirmed kind of what I thought from the get go uh, when I saw the um, draw and the scheduling and even the left for the first set of games. Yes, it was all to play for in these four four games. I was dumbfounded that there was no overtime because I could very well see that one. But none of the four teams I, I i've even pulled my foot down on chelsea none of the four teams that won uh on tuesday and on wednesday will win the champions league i just don't see it i think uh chelsea is maybe the one where one could argue potentially but it just doesn't look like it honestly and yeah uh we lost my favorite team that was remaining unfortunately and we also lost um all italian the final italian team which also is something that hurts me a little bit, but on the other side, as a media media fan, I'm a bit. That's a little bit of glee in me that uh, Juventus got ousted <laughs> again in the round of 16, and again in you know in the end it was kind of it it was quite humiliating. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk about that in a bit. So um, as I said, the first one Ajax Benfica. It was almost as I feared. Uh, if you have been watching my Dutch reviews, I've been saying Ajax does not look right. They are not in the best uh, phase of the season at the moment. And yes, in Lisbon they should have won. They had so many chances, they wasted them and uh, already had a goalkeeping mistake. And it's goalkeeping again that undid them this time around. Ajax did not create as many chances as they did in Lisbon, however, they still dominated the game left and right, up and down. However, uh, Benfica did what they already did in qualifying against PSV, just hung back tightly and defend, and defend well, they did. Ajax did not really have many big chances, in fact, I think the biggest chance was uh, more or less the last kick of the game uh, when Broby had a big miss and that might have been even offside. So uh, in that sense that was the disappointing part but when you watch the game um, I think when you just watch the flow of the game you could have only come to one conclusion Ajax is eventually gonna score. But I know I have seen this Ajax before. I thought yeah if you go with nil nil into that half boy will this give the a boost and then you will have um, a tough time and that's exactly what happened and with the one shot on goal a free kick from the outside um, comes in uh, uh, you know a Grimaldo free kick comes in Onana yells I got it no he did not because Nuno is just ahead of him gets to the ball and goes into it Onana this was I think his first game back uh, pretty bad goalkeeping mistake this was entirely avoidable Entirely avoidable. Then I knew that Ajax is not gonna find the fire 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 on the way back. Yeah, does hurt because I really, really was hoping that Ajax will at least give us a quarter final final again because I I love the way they play and so on. That they had such a great um, group stage in many ways. On the positive side is that amazing home jersey will probably now become a little bit cheaper. So just putting that one out there as well from the portuguese side i think if you're a fan of porto or sporting you are just dumbfounded how can it be that this benfica side that is nowhere in the league that yeah i don't want to say was limping into the group uh, in, in into the knockout round but you know um it was on the backs of a rather weak barcelona side made it into in, in the next stage thoroughly beaten by bayern and in the league really put way past behind Sporting and Porto and in, in case of Sporting, Sporting who have been resoundedly beaten by Ajax uh, in the in the fall. How this Befica side made it out of the quarter qu qu final. It must count as a uh, minor, uh, at least a minor sensation but also must definitely count that those two Porto and Sporting would think how can that even happen. 
So yeah, uh, very very in 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 interesting. Definitely the biggest game of the four that that we had was then Manchester United against Atletico Madrid. Uh, two of the biggest names in there. Although I have to say the bigger names in terms of wins of the European Cup and the Champions League is definitely Ajax against Benfica. That was the standout tie historically. However, at the moment United and Atletico Madrid is of course uh, the bigger game and. United on the back of their big win against Atletico Madrid, but uh, uh, not Atletico, um, Tottenham. Uh, you thought that they might actually destroy Atletico Madrid. However, in the first leg, and uh, again, I don't like that there's three weeks in in, in, in between. But in the first leg, Atletico Madrid already outplayed United largely. Should have maybe gone two 0 up, and this one one was um, a little bit flat, flattering to United. This time around, I think the tails have been turned. I mean, for thir thirty minutes, United played really well and put uh, Atletico Madrid on, on the on the back foot. But Atleti really found their their um, how to say the Simeone essence again. Full on teamwork, everyone fighting for each other um, and clawing themselves back in, in in the game. And around the third, the game started to uh, to to shift. They had an offside goal already, and then uh, Griezmann sees that Griezmann was amazing in this entire game. He was working his you know what off left and right, up and down. He uh, 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 cross in, and uh, Hannah Lodge uh, can head it in. Uh, to, kind of to stun Old Trafford, and then what surprised me is it was never uh, up until the point United was the more active team and had maybe a bit more chances, but they could not get anything going from that on. Um, I don't want to say Atletico were comfortable, but there were no huge chances falling United's way afterwards anymore, and that one was a big surprise to me. And in the end, I think Atletico deserved that win, and yeah. Uh, I know that this light blue jersey of theirs cost me in Milan loads of trouble uh, or pain even. Well, another jersey that I have my eyes on and yeah, that one looks uh, very, very nice as well. So Atletico are through. Uh, to the surprise of many, I'm definitely uh, uh, saying that because uh, in the build-up, while United were not great, Atletico looked downright atrocious. And again, if you have been in the uh, in in the group where Atletico were, where I totally Atletico should not have made it out of this group. I'm not saying that Milan should, Porto should have made it out of, out of this group again. If you are Porto, uh, and even to a certain degree a Milan fan, because uh, Milan were robbed at the San Siro, you're thinking, how is Atleti suddenly in the quarter quarterfinal? But yeah, we have two Madrid teams going into the quarter uh, finals, which makes it interesting. And the only English team out is Man Manchester United, which does not come as a total surprise, because again, go back to a group stage. United were kind of limping themselves into the next, ne ne next round with many last minute victories. That they probably wouldn't have really de that they probably didn't re deserve all that much. Uh, also, as has to mention, this is the first season in the, since I think um, 09 10 that Cristiano Ronaldo is not winning any title, uh, and it's also the first time that Atletico Madrid is ousting a uh, Cristiano Ronaldo team. So uh, all all big surprises going forward. Another huge surprise is what Villarreal did at Juventus. Very Benfica-like. Juventus dominated the first half with uh, Vlahovic um, hitting once the, cro the, the cross by having two other really good ch ch chances. It is similar to Ajax. It seems like inevitable when you will score. But again, if you then do not score, the second half is always going to spell trouble. And the longer the game went, the more... Villarreal got into the game and thought, yep, we might have a chance here. And it was just, again, right around the 60th minute that U.S. Uh, morale seemed to break and Villarreal got a little bit more forward. And then uh, it is a pretty clear penalty call that uh, took actually uh, VAR a little bit of a surprise there because honestly, this was a stonewall penalty. That even the ref had a good, good view, should, should, should call this right now, how Rugani puts out his leg. Uh, uh, totally surprised. I was even surprised that there was not another yellow card card given. 
Jérôme Moreno, Staff South of Chesney, is there, but it goes in into the net. And at that, that moment, you really felt it was the, the killer blow like for Ajax against Benfica. There's no coming back for Juventus. What's even worse is that um, Villarreal then really took uh, control of the situation with Pau Torres scoring uh, a second goal and then very late on another. Very clear penalty. I mean, the lead couldn't keep again his hands to him. They would have, I mean, the ref could, 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 could or, or even the, uh, already given the third goal, but then uh, Danjuma spe, uh, steps up and makes it 3 0. Uh, again, all I know all the investments that Juve did in the winter break were more to secure uh, the Champions League spot for the next season. However, you really, th you really would, you would expect a Juventus team that is very much prepped up uh, to go past the Villarreal team. That is another really big nail in the coffin. And and, and again, um, I'm not so talking here. If I'm an Inter fan, Inter gave it their all against Liverpool. The game was just a non-contest because uh, Liverpool scored late in Milan. Basically kill, killing a tie and Inter then killed themselves with this the yellow, the yellow red for Alexis Sanchez. Um, but Inter, really, you win I uh, know no, you you are runners up, so shows actually you uh, you you need to win the winning group. But Inter gave it all and just ran into big opponent. Juve won the group, got a decent opponent, but we knew already this will be tough because Villarreal beat Atalanta, and at the moment to take the tie, it was a turn a little bit that Juve is above Atalanta, but I I still fancy this Atalanta team a whole lot. So uh, it was kind of there. It was definitely of the three defeats now in the round of 16 for Juventus against Lyon, against Porto, and against Villarreal. I have to say, Villarreal is maybe, maybe by name the least shameful one. However, on the other side, a Juventus team that actually scored in the first minute of the first, first leg, had that game largely under, under control, then let it go. And then in the second leg, cannot score, although you have one of the biggest talents there. It's pretty shameful. It's pretty shameful, I have to say, uh, and not worthy of a team of Juventus as such. That's that job. Then the opposite was actually more in the cards for a long time in Lille, where Chelsea honestly um, did not look good. Lille put up pressure and actually got to Chelsea, uh, to, to, to Chelsea and then took him the lead through Burak Yilmaz penalty. However, a brilliant scene, uh, uh, Jorginho with a hand, hand, hand ball, pretty clear why they then um, so much protesting was a little bit um, surprising to me. But you know, I guess this is the new uh, way of doing things. But um, Jorginho, who had who was the f at fault for the penalty, also did some, some, some brilliant with a wonderful pass into Pulisic just before the half and Pulisic scores. Then Lille actually again ramped the speed up, uh, had a whole lot of pressure, even hit with a free head at the um, uh, upright. The problem is though that they had to do a few changes. Onana came on from Botman, which kind of um, uh, made, gave trouble in the D, in the D, D defense, and then uh, Timothy Weah had to come, come, come on. So uh, quite a, a little bit of a setup and also, you know, a little bit more uh, um, more offensive, a bit more re risky, and so you run into a car contact where a Mason Mount cuts across to us, uh, Billy Guetta, who makes it 2-1, and that killed the tie off. Lil still trying to get an equalizer. Lil probably would have deserved at least a draw out of the, this game because they fought hard, uh, were definitely invigorated by it, by the crowd. This was probably of all the home, 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 this the most spirited performance because it was a never give, 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 give up, up, up performance. United never could, could get going. Ajax lost it like Juventus. Lil never gave up. In that sense, I have to uh, give a lot of credit to him. So yeah, what we're left with is we have three English teams, we have three Spanish teams, we have a Portuguese team and we have a German team. So uh, in any, uh, so, uh, we have Liverpool, City and Chelsea, we have the two Madrid teams plus Villarreal and we have Bayern and we have Benfica. Now, uh, as for a draw, it will be a free draw. Um, I honestly would love to see uh, an English and a Spanish duel. I actually made it up in mind. I want to see um, Liverpool against Atletico, although um, Madrid derby would be nice as well. 
Um, it would be fun. Liverpool against Atletico, uh, City against Chelsea, uh, Real Madrid against Bayern, Villarreal against Benfica. To have one rank outsider in the semi-final. This would be my dream draw, but I know uh, it will happen. I will definitely react to whatever will happen in the draw as well at the moment. And I was a little, little bit surprised. There's not much separating Liverpool and Manchester City. Uh, thanks to Liverpool winning yeah, yesterday, the Arsenal suddenly their um, ratings are very, very, very level at this very moment. But don't count for it. It's just uh, in uh, inches, uh, very little between them. Liverpool in the simulations ahead of Manchester City. For the first time this season, Manchester City are not the top five favorites. Followed by Bayern Munich, and this is 18, 17, 16 percent of winning it. Real Madrid in fourth, Chelsea in fifth. And then Atletico Villarreal and Benfica are, of course, the rank outsiders. Draw will be held on Friday, so very much looking forward to that one. And then we'll see uh, who will go on and win. I gotta say, and this is now, I'm. Yeah, not talk I mean, I saw a little bit of Liverpool against Arsenal, which are, are, are was the best game on Wednesday. Um, I gotta say that I have a feeling that since now there's a very difficult title race in England, this will keep Manchester City a little bit up, and Manchester City is gonna win it. That's my. Am I ahead of the quarterfinal draw prediction? In any case, please let me know what you thought about the games in the midweek. Uh, whether you agree with me about the assessments of, of the games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever anything happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!